Okay, so this is the King of Cups. It's it's not indicating to me so much like a water sign, but I do feel for many of you it could be. But I feel like this is an energy of somebody who is uh, full of wisdom, who doesn't really resort to escapism to you know not deal with the reality of his or her situation. We also have the Knight of Cups, which is a very creative, very caring, very loving type of a, a person. They have a good heart generally, but they want to please other people a little bit too much. And then we have, you know, the very young uh, Page of Cups energy in the reverse position. This is somebody that resorts to escapism, possibly, you know, drugs, alcohol, um, or even aligning themselves with bad people because they are so eager to please. And then when you confront them um, of a specific situation, when you confront them about their actions, when you tell them you need to grow up, you need to be responsible, I feel like you are telling somebody about this. I, I see those words like, you know, escaping your mouth this month. You need to grow up. You need to take care of yourself. You need to be responsible. You cannot be a burden on society or you cannot be a burden on the rest of the family. So I feel this element coming through where somebody's just kind of coasting through life, not really taking ownership of their actions. And there is a victim mentality associated with this card, okay? So for some of you, it could be a water sign. So a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio that you are dealing with. And then for others of you, I feel that it is somebody within your family unit um, under the age of 30 that is behaving this way. And I feel as if they're dealing with a lot of internal conflict, okay? So this is a card overall about strife, about not having harmony, not having peace, not having, um, you know, like, I, I, I feel like this person is really tied up with you. And as a result of it, they might not... It's it's almost like you never, when they're out of sight, you always worry about them. So I do feel there is a lot of love here, but when they're out of the picture, it gives you anxiety. You know, on the one hand, you need to kind of relinquish control and let them live their lives. But on the other hand, I feel like when they're out of sight, you're just like, I wonder what they're up to. I wonder if they're okay. I wonder if, you know, they have enough food to eat. I wonder if they're making good decisions. So I feel like you're constantly conflicted about how you deal with this situation as well. Do I, you know, support them, give them all the love, all the affection that they need? and just enable the situation or do i tell it as it is you know be very stern very firm and just set them in their place and so you're trying to figure out what's the best course of action because on the one hand you understand that when it comes to like withholding love and affection and exercising tough love with this person um, you feel like it might isolate that person because i don't feel like a lot of people are as patient with this person the way that you are. And so you're just trying to decide like they're messing up their life, they're going down a, you know, bad path. So do I just ignore it and or do I just give them, you know, tough love? And I also feel like you care about them and they're kind of burning bridges left and right. So you feel like if you were to kind of cut them off or to stop supporting them when they're in a jam, who will they turn to? You're afraid that they're going to turn to the other bad people. So I feel that element coming through here. And I also feel that the path that you're going to take is towards emotional support. You understand that they might not have that family structure. They might not have that love and that support from other people. And so you are exercising a little bit of caution, but at the same time, I feel like what's going to end up happening is you are going to give them the love and the support, even though you feel like this person aggravates me. I wish they would grow up. I wish they would, you know, get their life course in, in order. And I wish like I could give them a piece of my mind, but I feel like ultimately, you know, that that might isolate and sever that relationship that you have with them. So you're going to try to uh, soften the blow a little bit by giving them the love and support, which is something I would expect from you Capricorns, because I feel like you are a very um, astute observer of human nature. And you you know, that human capacity, you know, when people are good, they're, they're really, they can be really, really good. 
And when they're bad, it's like they can be redirected and guided towards the right path. So a lot of you come into positions where you mentor or you teach or you help others in some way. And so I feel like this energy is really testing you. And I would also say that um, sometimes tough love is going to be required depending on who we're dealing with. Okay. So I feel like even though you are taking the softer approach, I just want you to be a little bit careful about enabling a situation or enabling a person who is not accountable for their own actions. So just be careful about that because once again, victim mentality here. This is like the woe is me card. I do all of these things for all the other people, but no one is showing me, uh, you know, um, no one is showing me their appreciation. And, and this is not your energy so much. It's the person that you're dealing with who is not taking control of their lives, who is kind of like who is a victim of their circumstance. And I do feel that on the one hand, you do understand because you might, it might be in your family. So you might have similar upbringing, but on the other hand, I just feel like this is not somebody that can grow and learn and, you know, be the best that they can be if others keep enabling them, okay? So this enabling behavior needs to stop from somewhere. Maybe if you put your foot down, if you behave in a stern, in a very, you know, um, tell it as it is type of a way, you might lose out on the relationship, but, and the other person might get defensive. And you might have to walk away from the relationship. But I do feel that it might actually set them on a correct course of action where they realize that your patience is running thin. They might not take advantage of this situation anymore. And they might actually shape up. Okay. So I hope that, you know, this provides some guidance for you guys, especially if it's a, a younger person that you're dealing with or someone under the age of 30, especially in the family unit. Okay. The other card that is coming through here. We have here the Ten of Wands. And um, let me just say this. The past 10 months. So this to me denotes like a, a type of energy and it, it's predicting like time frame. So the past 10 months, things have been really, really, really piling on. Things have been really busy, very hectic. A lot of swift changes have happened in your life. I feel for many of you, this is a card about picking up the pieces and moving. So there might have been a lot of travel. There might have been a lot of like change in environment. There might have been like physically, emotionally, psychologically, or even like energetically, like just draining work that you needed to get done. A lot of tedious work, a lot of like carrying heavy equipment around, um, moving from one place to the next. And kind of like setting up a temporary shop where you can operate out of, where you can work out of. I see a lot of relief worker, a relief worker, like um, people setting up, you know, like um, a first first aid, um, like little hut where you can operate and, and see clients. I see a lot of like uh, people, lawyers, especially doing some type of pro bono work where you go to a uh, an area that is heavily afflicted, you set up like a little temporary um, canopy, a little camp or a little tent, and then you see clients. So this is like setting up shop. So the last 10 months, including the month of August, I feel like it has been very physically demanding the work that you're doing. This is also dealing with inclement weather. So a lot of rain, hail, sleet, even like very severe, you know, hot weather where you're carrying a lot of equipment, a lot of stuff, and things have been a little bit difficult for you in terms of navigation, okay? It's showing up in the reverse position. So things are going to be not hectic at all this month. So I feel like you have a lot of downtime. You have a lot of time to recuperate. But I want you to be careful. Like you're used to this energy. You You work in a really methodical manner. You're used to this. And so you're used to like handling multiple things at the same time. You're used to having multiple projects running at the same time. And you're used to this fast paced, you know, chaotic type of an environment. So when things slow down, take the time and the moment to slow down with the energy. It's basically telling you kind of like the calm before the storm. 
is basically telling you, you need a breather here. We're giving you a breather. So you need to really slow down. So don't take on additional projects, especially if others are coming to you, not able to handle their own responsibilities. And they're just like, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Can you do this for me or do that for me? And you're just like, well, I've done it in the past, you know, I, I've done it in the past. So why not? Well, the thing is, take some time off take care of yourself and you know having some downtown don't feel guilty about it i feel like capricorns and virgos you guys whenever you're kind of free and you don't have a lot on your plate you always find something to do because you feel guilty just sitting still i feel like some taurian people uh you're like that too but i feel like you know capricorn virgos just constantly have to dither and tinker with something so if they're telling you if the energy slows down for this month Take the time to really be in the moment. Don't feel like, okay, I need to do something. I need something to keep me um, sharp, to keep me on my toes. So you might end up taking on other people's responsibilities. And that's enabling, okay? That's enabling. That means they're not taking care of themselves. They're taking advantage of the situation. You're kind of falling right into it. And so be careful, please. Um, what I also feel as well is this is a card of uh, being in a very deep meditative state, okay? This is a card overall about reassessing, reassessing progress, waiting on a outcome from a progress. So I see a lot of you, um, this is usually what I think about, like uh, somebody working in a laboratory, they're testing something and they have to wait like five days in order to, to see the results. And they have different experiments or different tests that they're running. And they have to, you know, take some time off, document everything that they see, document everything that they observe in their lab, you know, um, notebook. And then they come back and they add a different reaction to it and see how it reacts. And then they document it again. So I feel like some of the work that you're doing it feels to me like it's very stop, go, stop, go, where you can't just get all the phases of the work done. You have to, you know, do it one day at a time. And it can prove to be very unsatisfying and very, very taxing because you would prefer to just knock it out of the way and move on to the next task. So you have multiple projects that are running concurrently, but I feel like there is a little bit of a stalled energy and they're not moving in the manner that you would hope. OK, um, I also feel as well, there might be some trips taken. This is a card overall when it comes to travel and it comes to and it deals with communication from far away, communication coming through via electronic means and communication coming through like in some type of a indirect rather than than, you know, physically interacting with someone. This is kind of like distance communication. We have the eight of wands showing up in the reverse position. So there is going to be some type of a slowdown as it relates to communication, um, playing phone tag, calling somebody, they're not there, they're, they might be on a different time zone. And then they call you back and you're on a different time zone when you're, you might be sleeping, you might be out. And so there's this consistent, you know, phone tag, not being able to move forward, not being able to get the results or the answers that you want right then and there when it's meaningful, when you need it. So it's going to feel a little bit like just stop, go, stop, go. And it can be a little bit frustrating, but I just feel like all the downtime in the meantime is for you to just kind of sit back and relax a little bit. And I also feel like with your work situation, there might be some stalled communication here when it comes to clients. They might be traveling. They might be out of the picture. And so it's not you. Don't take it personally. Just uh, follow up with them when you can. Do the best that you can. Don't get frustrated. Okay? Um, I'm getting a very big legal counsel with this card. And um, I honestly feel, especially for those of you who are self-employed, I feel like there might be some extravagant spending, okay? This is a little bit of, um, it's not a bad card, but usually I think this is somebody that who uh, indulges, you know, who likes the, the finer things in life, who likes, you know, wine, especially alcohol, especially, you know, wanting to have a good life, a very pleasurable life. It's a, a person that enjoys the life of leisure. And so if you have a legal counsel, 
and you're dealing with some issues as it relates to your finances, as it relates to your company, how much money is coming in, how much money is leaving. And they're telling you, you need to stall this energy a little bit. Don't be so self-indulgent. Don't, you know, buy too many expensive things. And I feel like this is for a very small minority of you because Capricorns are just uh, very, you're very good with money. And I feel like you, you spend very conservatively. And so this is for a small minority where you might even be dealing with somebody and you're just like, you're being too extravagant, possibly a relationship partner or a business partner or somebody within your family even. And they're just overspending, overindulging, spending money that they don't have. And then they find themselves kind of like on the outs and they ask you for money even. So I want you to be very careful about, you know, where you're putting this energy and where be very careful about enabling this type of behavior. Okay. I just feel like the overall energy for this month is you want to give somebody a piece of advice. You want to give somebody a piece of your mind. You want to tell them to shape up, but you're hesitant about doing that because, you know, for the reasons I explained earlier, you don't want to isolate that person. And you also want to continue to show your support, but it's, it's becoming very, very difficult. And so I feel like no matter what, by the end of this month, you might walk away from this situation and realize that it is not your battle to fight, that the other person needs to do this on their own. And the sooner that you come to that realization, I feel like the easier it's going to be for you. Because like I said before, it's an enabling behavior. You might do it out of love or you might do it out of um, guilt. And um, when we do things out of guilt it can backfire. Okay. Don't do things unless you feel like you are personally aligned with the choices that you make, because I feel like you're in a situation here where you're looking for a project to work on. You're looking for something to fix. And this does, person doesn't need fixing from you. They need to be accountable for their actions. Okay. So let me see if there's anything that came in earlier, because uh, when the three court cards came out, I got distracted with that. I feel like relationships, okay, relationship partners um, in general, um, I'm just sensing that there might be some type of family values, misalignment between you, your family, and then your relationship partner. And we are all, you know, shaped by our family upbringing, but I feel like there's something innately, some family values issues that might be clashing between you and your partner where you don't really see eye to eye. So for example, it could be a religious thing where you you and your partner might be different religions or different cultures or different races and uh, different ethnicities. And you, you want to raise the child a specific way your partner might not. And so there's this, you know, conflict of interest. And likewise, um, you might have a very, you know, you might have a very close knit family. And I feel many of you do. Your partner might not. And so it's really hard to introduce your partner and, and to get your partner to go to all these family functions and to have that same, to replicate that close knit family when your partner is not into that. Okay. And it can go, go both ways. And I feel like for some of you, you're highly independent. It might be your partner that wants to have a close knit family unit and you're not really ready for that or you feel like that's not okay for whatever reason because of values differences because of cultural differences and things like that okay so i hope this is helpful for you guys and um uh, oh the last card i forgot to talk about this one the nine of wands the nine of wands is kind of like being it, it's like taking another like one next step is going to end all your struggles. One last step is going to end your struggle. So if you are helping with somebody and they perpetually mess up and you feel like it's okay, I'll just help them one other time. Um, be careful about that. Okay. Because I feel like you, while you see it as, you know, like the, the, the end justifies the means. Um, I feel like in this situation, it would be best for you. We have here the nine of wands. And we have here the Eight of Wands and the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is just dropping a big burden because you don't want to be bothered with it anymore. And so you're just like, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I want to fight it. I want to just, you know, get through the last stage of the process. And they're telling you, make sure that it is your battle that you're fighting. Make sure you're struggling for something that is 
meaningful, sustainable, and long-lasting. Otherwise, you're just struggling for somebody else's burden that they need to be accountable for.